So let's jump over to that 3JS documentation really quick here. Actually, I already have it pulled up. And then go to installation. You can see it runs through the basics of how to set up a very simple 3JS project. So this will be kind of our starting point here. But before we can do that, we need to set up our build tool or our bundler. So they recommend using Vite. So they have some steps for installing that 3JS library, installing Vite. So we're gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna copy these and run these in our terminal. So paste those in. So if I go into our package.json, you can see it installed 3JS as a dependency and Vite as a dev dependency. Let me close this here. Dev dependencies do not get bundled with the final application. 3GS we do need to include with our, our final application. So that is a plain old dependency. And that is the difference between save dev here and save. Next thing that we need is we need to set up our package.json so we can run our application. So I'm gonna add some scripts here and I'm gonna add one called dev and we're gonna call vite and then I'm gonna set the, the host name here of our server. So typically this defaults to localhost, um, but running on my Mac here, I always run into issues with that. I'm not quite sure why. So I'm just doing the straight IP address of localhost, which is 127.0.0.1. Vite is gonna start our development server. It's gonna serve our application locally. So before we can run our application, we need to add some files here. So we're gonna need our base index.html file. So let's go back to that 3GS documentation. And they actually have, under creating a scene, they have the code for kind of a very simple application here that has a rotating cube. So I'm just gonna copy this directly and paste that in. We need to add our JavaScript file that's gonna contain all our code. So to start with, I'm gonna just put everything into one file, and then as we develop this out, we'll refactor the code in two separate files. So let's grab this chunk of code here, and I'll talk through what's going on with this once we see it working. In our HTML document here, it's very simple. We're just setting up a title. We're setting the margins on the body to zero. So our 3D app takes up the whole screen. Then we're importing our script as a module. And then in our main file, this is responsible for adding that canvas to the HTML document and that it's gonna render the scene to. All right, so we should be able to test out our application here. So remember that we created this script called dev. So I'm gonna do npm run dev. So you can now see it's built our application and it's serving it at this address here. So on Mac, you can do command click, open that up and we have our rotating cube. So let's talk through the, the code a bit and how this actually works. So first thing we're doing is importing our 3JS library up at the top here. So we're importing the entire library as this variable three. So first thing we do is we're gonna set up our scene. So this is basically our scene graph that contains all the objects in the scene. So anytime we add anything to the scene, you know, right now we just have a cube and you can add objects underneath objects using a parent-child relationship. Um, so say you had a character and that character had weapons, you know, that weapon could be a child of that character and kind of move along with the character. Next, we're setting up a camera here. We're gonna be creating an isometric RPG. So we're gonna be using an orthographic camera. Um, but for now, we'll just stick with the perspective camera makes things a little bit easier to work with. Um, and then we're setting up the renderer here. So this is actually what is rendering our game to the screen. So this is a WebGL renderer. Um, so underneath 3JS, you know, it's using WebGL to render our 3D scene. 3JS is an abstraction layer that sits on top of that, makes it much easier to create these games. Because doing WebGL directly would be about you know, three, four, or five times as much code as what we have here just to get a rotating cube. So we're setting the, the um, size of our renderer. So basically the area that it's drawing to on the screen is the size of our window. We're setting our animation loop that's, you know, running every couple milliseconds or so to this function down here. 
And then finally, we're adding the, the DOM element associated with the renderer, which is a canvas. And we're appending that to our HTML document. Defining our HTML document here, all we have is this script. There's no elements within the body itself besides that script element. If you go over here, I hit F12. Let me blow this up. If you go into the inspector, you can see our HTML document here, the body. There's now this canvas element. So when we're appending that, um, the renderer's DOM element to the body of our document, this is what is getting added here. So that sets up our 3.js scene, but we don't have anything in it yet. So then we need to go ahead and define our cube. So there's two different things, really three different things you need to draw anything on the screen. You need the geometry, which is basically all the vertices and how are those vertices connected together with all the edges. So in 3.js, we have some predefined geometry here. We have a box. If I just type in geometry, you can see we have a box, a cone, ring tube, um, plane, torus, We've got a whole bunch of stuff here. So we'll be using these primitives um, to first prototype out our game. And then we also need a material. So if I type in material here, um, we have tune material, basic material, Fong, um, Lambert, normal, standard, physical, a whole bunch of different materials, each a little bit different than the other. The basic material is an unlit material. So we just give it a color and then it's rendering that color on the screen. So you can see there's no type of shading or anything like that. Um, so we'll be adding some lights into the scene and getting that shading effect pretty soon. And then finally, we need to combine that geometry and that material into one, and that is called a mesh. So we create a new mesh and then in the constructor, we pass in our geometry and our material. And then we take that resultant cube mesh and we add it to the scene. So here I'm just setting the, the camera back a bit and the Z axis, and then we're setting up the rotation of the cube. So every frame we're adding 0 0.01 to the X rotation and Y rotation of the cube. So if I were to comment out this line, you can see the cube is now just rotating in one axis. And if I were to comment out this other line, now the cube is just rotating in the Y axis. So inside this animate method is really where all the magic is happening. That's where all of our scene updates are gonna happen. And then once we update the scene, then we're gonna render that to the screen. All we need to do is call render, the render method on our renderer, and pass in our scene, which is all the data that needs to be drawn, and then we give it a camera. So from what perspective are we viewing our scene? And using those two things, it can figure out how to convert all that 3D stuff into a 2D representation on the screen. So I know that was kind of a lot, but I wanted to really run through the basics of what this simple 3GIS app is doing. So I want to extend out this sample application a bit, um, get sort of our basic project set up. So I think we can do a bit more here. Um, I would like to add in some lighting, you know, maybe some shadows, um, a camera that we can actually control, and some additional stats and UI and other stuff that we, you know, is going to be really helpful for developing out this game. So the first thing that I'll add is some orbit controls. So I'm going to go back to the 3GS docs here, and this is really helpful for, you know, finding the different code that you need. So orbit controls is, basically allows us to rotate the camera around and move the camera around. This may not be the final camera controller that we have, um, but for now it's going to be really useful for development. So here it tells you how to import that into your project and a nice code example for how to set that up. So let's copy this code, get that imported in. Going over here, we need to set up our controls, our passing in the camera and the render DOM element, and then we need to con call controls.update. We also need to add that in our animation loop as well. So copy this, I'll add that, Let's see right below our camera here. I'm gonna move the renderer up. So that's sort of the first thing that gets set up. Um, so after we change our camera in any way, we need to call controls.update. 
And then I'm going to remove the cube rotation and we'll call controls.update in our animate loop as well. And now if I hold the left mouse button down, I can rotate the cube around, scroll wheel, zooms in and out, and right mouse button allows me to pan. That was really easy. We now have our camera controller. So next let's add some lights into the scene. So we have some actual shading. So I'm gonna create a light called sun. This will be a new directional light. So directional lights, they don't have a position really, you know, like the sun, it's just so far away, it doesn't really matter where it is. Um, but they just shine light uniformly on the scene in one direction. So to set the direction of that light, we actually set the position on the light, which is a little counterintuitive, but that's how it works. I like to do kind of at an angle here, so I'm gonna do one, one, one. Then we need to make sure we add the light to the scene. So this is called sun. Right away you can see nothing really looks different and that's because we're using a mesh basic material which doesn't have any type of shading. So let's just change this to mesh standard material instead. And now you can see that we have shading now um, except all these sides are uniformly lit so it still really doesn't look any different. The sides opposite the light aren't lit at all, which we'll fix that as well. Um, so let me set this to something slightly different. I'll do like one, two, three. So it's getting some different shading here. There we go. Now we can see it looks actually 3D. So these sides aren't lit at all because there's no light hitting those sides. Um, so I always want to add in an ambient light as well. And ambient lights are the simplest light. Um, they have no direction whatsoever. It's just all, all geometry gets lit up uniformly. So we'll set the intensity of our ambient light to, let's do 0.5. Then we'll add that light to the scene. So you can tell that light is added to these sides. They're a bit brighter now. And now the back sides of our cube have some lighting on them as well. All right, so we have our shaded cube and we have our camera controls. Um, one thing I want to add in is our stats, which gives us our frames per second. So the stats panel is not in the normal 3DS documentation. So I did find a tutorial here you can grab the code from, but you can see the stats right here. This is actually a live 3DS app. Um, you can click on that. So you can get the frames per second and the time per frame. So it's about eight milliseconds or 120 frames per second. So it's very simple to add this into a project. I do this on all my projects. In the add-ons for the 3JS library, you can see there's a stats module here. So I'm gonna copy this import statement. I can never remember these import statements, so I'm always looking them up and copying and pasting them. And then down here, you can see it's setting up stats. So it's defining a new stats. Let me blow this up some more here. So it's creating a new stats object, and then same as our renderer, it's appending that to the document. So I like to set that up at the very top here. And then in our animate function, we need to call stats. I believe it's update. Let's go check. Yeah, stats.update right here. Order doesn't really matter. I guess we can put it after the renderer. So now if you go back to our 3JS app now, see this is really tiny. Let me blow this up a bit. So we'll, we'll fix some of these issues with the, uh, the canvas not resizing as well. But now you can see that we have our frames per second in the upper left here, or the frame time. Um, since we're just rendering a cube, this is not very intensive, so we're not going to be dipping below 120 frames per second. Let's fix the issue with our canvas not resizing. You can see if I pull up um, the developer panel here, I'm changing the size of the window. We want our canvas to resize with the size of the window. Um, so we'll need to add a little event listener to whenever our document is resized and have it update the size of the canvas. So below our animate function here, I'm going to add a new event listener. 
I'm going to listen to the resize event of the window. Then there's two things that we need to do. We need to update our camera because the aspect ratio of the screen might change. So the aspect ratio of our camera needs to update as well. So camera.aspect is going to equal the inner width of the window divided by the inner height. And then need to update the projection matrix. Don't need to know what that is, just need to call it. And then finally, we need to update the size of our renderer. So that's set size, window.inner width, window.inner height. So now, if I stretch and shrink the window here, you can see that it gets resized and our cube is no longer getting hidden. So one last thing I'd like to add in here that's gonna help us with our development is setting up a UI. And luckily 3JS includes a UI library called Lil GUI. So I'm on the site for Lil GUI right now. Um, it's lil, l -I -L -GUI .com. So George always is the developer there. So you can see an example of the GUI on the right here. So we got checkboxes, we got strings, we got number sliders, color pickers, um, buttons, can trigger actions. So pretty much anything you would need in a UI, um, this comes with it. So to import um, little GUI into our project, we'll do import GUI from three add-ons, libs, little GUI module. So I'm gonna create our GUI. So we just gotta do new GUI. Calling new GUI actually goes ahead and adds that to the document. So if you go back to our 3 just app, you can see we have our controls on the side already here, um, but currently it's empty. So let's change that. The very bottom of the screen here, I'm gonna do GUI add a folder. I'm gonna call this folder a cube. I need to assign this to a variable. So I'm gonna call this, let's just call it folder. I'm gonna delete this later. Under folder, I want to add a new control. You pass in the object that you want to modify. So I actually want to modify the position of our cube. And then you specify the property on that object that you want to control with that UI control. So I want to control the X position of our cube. And then you can set a min and a max. So let's say between negative two and two. Then you can also set a step value. And then I want to name this X position. With these two lines, that added a cube folder here and then our X position control. And now when I slide this back and forth, you can see that it's automatically updating the position of our cube. Um, I don't have to hook up any event handlers or anything. It's doing all that behind the scenes. And we can do add color as well. This is going to be cube and be the material and then it'll be the color property on the material so we're setting that up here to green so i think this should work so you can see it's automatically assigned to the the current color of the cube and then if i change this to red or to blue or decrease the saturation or the brightness i can update all of that directly so we'll be leveraging little GUI quite a bit during the initial development. It's much faster to you know, spend a few minutes adding some controls in here than having to go back in, you know, change some constant, go back, oh, that's not what I wanted. I need to change it back to four. Okay, still not what I wanted. You know, like going back and forth, it takes up a lot of time over time. So and that's kind of our basic project setup. Um, we have our stats, we are able to render stuff on the screen, we got some lighting, camera controls, we have a UI. So I think we're ready to actually start building out the game now, start laying down some terrain.